Well, welcome everyone. Today we have a very, very interesting topic, using Mergent Intellect to find new customers. And you might say, Mergent what? Mergent Intellect. Uh, Erica was here probably a year and a half or two years ago and explained this to me, to us. And since then, most of my clients, I send them to the library and ask them to find out uh, more about their customers through Mergent Intellect. So before we get started and hear what Erica has to say, I have to do a little homework. My name is Diane McKeever. I am the education chair at the Manatee, uh, um, at the, what am I? At the <laughs> Minnesota chapter of SCORE. Uh, SCORE is a nationwide nonprofit organization, and we're an independent resource of the Small Business Administration, your friends at the SBA. We provide free confidential business mentoring. So if you're thinking about opening a business, think about contacting SCORE, and we can help walk you through the process and hopefully get you over some of the bumps in the road. Our chapter, the Minnesota chapter, which is uh, Manatee and Sarasota counties, has nearly 90 volunteers waiting to help you. And we've also been recently named a chapter of the year. So in what aspect of your business can we help you? Literally, uh, you're thinking about opening a business. You haven't opened it yet. Let's help you. We'll kick around the idea. We'll help you come up with a, a profit and loss and see if you can actually make money with your idea. Or you've started up and you realize that maybe marketing is harder than you thought you needed some help with that. We can help. Or you want to grow your business. Or lastly, you want to sell or close your business. We have a team specially designed to do just that, help you sell, close, or buy a business. That's the converse of that, right? So if you're thinking about any of those, think about applying for a mentor. Now, where would you do that? Well, it's pretty easy. You go to score.org slash Minnesota, and there's a big old button that says request a mentor. You click on it, you fill in a little bit of information. They look at your zip code and will uh, we'll, uh, supply you with a mentor. Generally, we try and supply a mentor that's close to you, but most of us, most of the people are in that chapter don't really care where our clients come from. And so you can actually look at mentor profiles and request a specific mentor based upon what you see on our website. In addition to that, all of our local workshops are available for signing up there. If you haven't checked them out, please do so. And then there is a wonderful search feature. We have almost 300 recorded webinars available on our website. So look at them and uh, check them out. Lastly, I wanna thank our sponsors and our community partners. You'll notice that a lot of these sponsors are financial institutions. They are more than happy to talk to you and they're especially happy to talk to you if you come in with a SCORE volunteer because they know that somebody has vetted you, that somebody has talked to you about your finances and has gotten all of your papers in order before we walk in the door. So they're particularly happy that we can help you. I just want to impress upon you the fact that this is being recorded. I did, in fact, hit the record button, so that's a good thing. Uh, and you will be getting a copy of this recording as well as Erica's slides. So you don't have to take copious notes. You'll be getting those in the next day or two. Uh, so I would encourage you to take notes, but uh, if you miss something, uh, you will be getting a copy of the recording and the slides. So without further ado, I am going to turn this over to our expert, Erica Dow. Take it away, Erica. Thanks, Diane. Um, and I'd like to thank Minnesota SCORE for asking the library to participate uh, in today's session. Um, and congratulations on your chapter of the year award. Um, hi everyone, my name is Erica Dow. I'm the Supervisor of Information Services for Manatee County Public Library. And I'm happy to he be here to share information about resources that the library provides um, to business owners and entrepreneurs. Um, particularly today, we'll focus on Mergent Intellect, um, which as uh, Diane has mentioned, is a resource um, that you can access through the library. The library does pay for it. Uh, you could probably uh, go to the next slide, Diane. 
Um, so the last time I did this uh, presentation with SCORE, we got a lot of questions about how do you get a library card um, during the, the early part of the presentation. So I thought I would address that up front. I do know that we have got a lot of um, non-Manatee County residents. Um, uh, sounds like even quite a few people from out of the state of Florida. So if you live in another county in Florida or out of the state of Florida and you, um, you want to access Mergent Intellect, uh, this business database, you can check with your local library, your local public library to see if they offer it. A lot of libraries do. Um, some others um, offer comparable services like Reference USA or A to Z um, or databases A to Z, I think it's called. So check with your library to see if they have Mergent Intellect if you're interested in, um, in using it. If you do live in Manatee County, um, and you live here or work here, go to school or own property here, you are eligible for a free card. Non-residents can get a card, and those are people who do not um, uh, qualify in that above category, can get a card for $25 a year. Um, this does need to be applied for in person, so this is not something where you can contact us online um, and, and pay it, uh, so you do have to apply for that in person. We also have the Manatee Library Foundation Lifetime Card. Again, this is an in-person registration, pay $100 one time, and you've got a lifetime card. You can access all the databases um, uh, for free. And all of these card types, include, including temporary, uh, can uh, access Mergent Intellect. If you go to the next slide. Um, so again, most of those card types, you visit any Manatee Library location in person. We do have an online application that's good for 90 days. So for those of you who maybe are outside of um, our county, if you want to try Mergent Intellect and, and see how it works and see if your library uses it, you can apply online um, and it's going to give you a temporary card number and then you create a PIN and you need to write that PIN down because then you'll need to use that to access Mergent Intellect through Manatee Library. Um, so there is an option to apply online, but again, it is temporary. Um, and anyone who uh, wants to get their permanent card must bring in photo ID. And uh, we do have some different eligibility documents that you can use. Uh, once you receive these slides, you'll be able to um, click on those links and get in more information about what, what documents we accept. Uh, we're, we, we accept quite a few. Uh, and again, just to say people who do live outside of Manatee County must visit in person to get uh, a more permanent uh, library card. But again, you can apply online, um, which is good for 90 days if you want to give it a try. So hopefully that answers most of the questions about how to get a library card. Um, and, you know, feel free to reach out to me, uh, check out our website. Those links will go to that. So some of the resources that we've put together, I won't go into great detail about most of them. We're mostly going to focus on um, doing a, a demonstration of Merchant Intellect, but Manatee Library does have a small business resource guide, um, and it includes a number of different subscription databases. We've got magazines, books, eBooks, all focused on business and entrepreneurship. Um, we'll get into the Merchant Intellect demo. And then we also have a business resources video tutorial. I won't show that video today, it's too long, but it is embedded in the slides. So when you receive those, you can watch those later. And that shows you how to use Mergent and also some of the other business resources and databases that we have. And again, the guide uh, includes um, information about local, state, national resources. I know that Man Minnesota SCORE has got a lot of great ones as well. So we have mentioned their resources as well as like SBDC, Small Business Development Council and Chamber of Commerce. Uh, there is a link here that goes to that guide online and includes information about some of our other business resources through our ebook collections. And these are a few of the different um, business resources databases that we offer outside of Merchant Intellect. One I'll point out is LinkedIn Learning is very popular. Um, and so, you know, an individual subscription to LinkedIn Learning, I believe, I, I, 
it could be more now, but the last time I looked, it was a while ago, a year or so ago. I think it was like $59 a month or something. Um, but we do offer it to our patrons um, for free. And then you can take those um, learning classes um, for, you know, things like business, project management, web design, uh, all kinds of professional development, and then save certificates to your LinkedIn profile. So I did want to point that one out. And of course, we have magazines and books. Uh, we've got a lot in our system, um, both uh, print and digital. And when you have your library card, you can actually go onto our catalog and uh, request books uh, to pick up or use our apps to get the digital books. Okay, so we're going to get into Mergent Intellect. And what this is, it's kind of similar if any of you have used Reference USA or database, uh, databases A to Z. Um, it is kind of similar to that, but it's probably more content rich. Um, it's got things like first research industry reports. So if you're looking for um, all kinds of data on different industries, you can find it. It's got key business ratios, which is good for, um, you know, working with, you know, maybe a score mentor or an accountant um, going through those. We won't get into that very much as we get into Mergent. Uh, we're mostly going to uh, focus on business search and also the consumer data. Um, those are where you can build lists of potential clients, whether you are trying to reach out to businesses or um, to individual consumers. They've got a couple other things like residential and local business search and also a learning center, which has got user guides and tutorials um, as well for using Mergent. So you can always uh, dive into that if you need more um, help and training. Um, this is um, powered by FTSE Russell and done in Bradstreet. Some of you may have uh, used it uh, a long time ago as Hoover's. Uh, and then there's other um, uh, data sources that they use. They use Nielsen um, and uh, Claritas and a number of different data sources that they pull from. So that's the kind of uh, general overview of what you might find in Mergent Intellect. And so I think now what we're going to do and and the way that you access this is going to be through the library's um, website. So I'm going to share my screen now so we can show you how to get there. Okay. This is uh, Manatee County Public Library System. This is our website. Um, again, you can check your library system to see if they offer um, Mergent Intellect. In our case, you will go through Research and Learning. And you can either click on the articles, uh, research and information button, or you can click on um, the databases button, but we'll go through articles. And what that's going to do is route us to a list, um, and then we're going to choose alphabetically. You can also choose by subject if you want to look at business and investing. At this point, if you are at home or you're at your own office, anything like that, it is going to ask you for your library card number and your PIN number. Uh, you will need to log in. Um, it'll have like a login link right here. You'll have to log in in order to access this. Since I'm inside the library, we provide access directly, so I don't have to do that. I just wanted to point out that you will have to do that if you are um, at your own home or office. forget. I've always got my screen um, zoomed in quite a bit. I know it makes it too big. So this is Mergent. Um, and as I mentioned, there are different um, data sets that you can search. Uh, you can search for a company right up at the top. Um, normally, this search is going to be for larger companies. For a really small businesses, they maybe only have one location locally, that kind of thing you would use. It's called residential search, but it also does like small local business search. Um, so up here at the top, if you were to type in a company, I'll just do one randomly. It's going to come up with a profile for that company. 
Mergent has both public and private, though they're going to have more data about public because public companies have to make more data um, available. Uh, but it does it does have both within its database. So in this case, um, you can see, you know, a company name, their location, their headquarters, some of the basics. Uh, you can also see their sales. So if you were looking for the parent company of a smaller company um, or vice versa, sometimes you can tell that right away from the sales. Um, obviously, this is going to be the um, headquarter um, parent company of Purina, um, Nestle Purina Pet Care. So they're making over $2 billion in sales. So that's pretty likely that they are the um, headquarter office. So one way that you would see a company profile, you click on the company name. And it's going to come up with a profile for that company. Um, and it will do this for a lot of different size companies, but they'll they're all going to have different details depending on how big they are. So they've got a you know overview of what this company um, sells. This is a subsidiary of the Swiss food giant Nestle. So Purina is a subsidiary of Nestle, and that it's got some basic contact information: where are their headquarters, what is their um, you know SIT code, um, whether they are a public or private company. And here it says total family members. And what that means is that's how many subsidiaries that they have. So it's a really, really large company. Um, in some cases, uh, financial details are going to be less um, up to date for a private company, which in this case it is. So it's only going back to 2020. And then you can look at executive details if you're trying to find out who um, who is the CEO and who is in top management of the company and it lists their names here. And then you can click on them to get more information. And then, as I mentioned about family members, family tree. So this actually shows how, especially larger companies um, are structured in terms of who's under them. So if you click on the little collapsible arrow, it's going to expand and show you all the subsidiaries. And, you know, obviously there's a lot of companies like Amazon and Pepsi, the really big ones that you could just be scrolling forever and ever on this screen, um, finding all the different companies. So if you did find a smaller company and you were wondering if that uh, was owned by a larger company, you can find that out here, or you can also find it from the smaller companies page because it will have uh, something you can link on to show who, who owns that company. So I just wanted to point out, um, that's kind of the basics of what you might see uh, in a, a company listing. So our next thing we're going to do is how to, I think this would be of most interest um, for everyone, is how to build a file. So a file um, that would have the business name, you know, any potential contacts, uh, like their, and it will have their address and phone number. For the most part, this does not have like individuals' emails, but it will have a website uh, wherever they are listed. Um, and then other kinds of details like sales, um, sick codes, things like that. So if you are searching for businesses, you're going to use advanced search. If you are searching for individual consumers, you're going to use consumer data. And we'll do both really quick. And I'll show you how to um, build files in both and show you a couple of tips and tricks. Because it can be it can be a little overwhelming the first time that you do um that you do this and get to my all right diane does anyone have any questions so far no. before i start on a file building okay no nope, so, you're doing good okay good so here we are in advanced search and this is where you are going to want to do a search for a specific type of business what if you're trying to um you know, find a potential list of other businesses to offer a product or a service to. So that's what you're going to use advanced search for. 
And you do have some options, include U.S., include Canada, include international. It defaults to U.S. So if you want to include Canada and, and international, you can do that. Um, it says exclude inactive companies from results. Yes, you probably want to do that. Um, and then these are the criteria that it's going to start with. And it has all these different tabs. So you can really choose a lot of different criteria to build your file. And you're probably going to want to do that. Um, but it depends on what kind of um, range that you're looking for. Are you looking nationally? Are you looking just Florida? Are you looking for just this regional area? And you can um, narrow that down with location. Anything that you choose, it's what's gonna show up on your search. So I'm gonna choose company name and just for the heck of it, I'll choose women owned. I mean, you can use all these different, um, actually, no, I'm gonna choose that. And then I have to, no, I don't wanna choose company name. I take it back. <laughs> I forgot you have to enter the company name in that case. Um, there's a different, there's a different screen that shows you how to, um, what to output on your list and what it shows. So in this case, I'm actually going to start with location and we'll just go with state region. I'm going to choose Florida and I'm going to add to criteria. So this is, um, how you're adding different criteria to your search. You can see that it's come up with like a pretty insane number of companies because it's just listing everything. So you have to add more criteria, in which case I am going to go to radius search. I'm gonna enter a zip code. I'll enter the one that I'm at. And then you can say search within so many miles. Um, it looks like it maxes out at 15 and I'm gonna add to criteria. And now you can see that it's showing me um, over 8,700 companies just within that radius. You can also do um, by city, by county. Um, they also have a feature within this um, system called geo mapping. You can actually draw a map. It's kind of like on a Google map of, of where you want to search. Um, but I'm just showing this as an example of how you can do it. Um, when I'm doing searches for demographics and things like that or a business list I usually go by county so I'm going to enter the state name and I think you can do multiple counties looks like it yeah and then you add to criteria this blue button is very important if you don't click on add to criteria nothing's going to change so it's it's really important that you hit that blue button to actually add it to this um, search area down here. And now that I've added some counties, I'm going to go ahead and just um, delete that radius search that I did. So I'm just going to X that out and it will update my search. And so now I've got yet again, a really large number of companies. Our subscription to Mergent Intellect will only let you export, I think, 2000 records. Mm. Um, at a time so this obviously you know you need to narrow it down and that was really really broad so i'm going to go to industry so it depends on what industry you are interested in um marketing your service or product to so you can use um these drop downs to kind of try to find what you're looking for honestly within that industry these are the industry codes usually i just do a keyword search um, so if you want to, um, market to, um, healthcare. healthcare, let's see what it comes up with. It doesn't like healthcare. So I'm just going to put health. So you can see these are associated with very specific industry codes that mm. the, um, U S government and the whole business industry use. Um, so if there was something in particular that you wanted to, you might have to start with like a larger search term and then just kind of narrow it down. Uh, so we've got health insurance. I'm trying to think what the other, um, we'll just say health services. So you want to find your sick code, but you can see that it's, you know, it's a pretty long list. Um, and you can also put a secondary one in if you would like. So we've chosen health services and I'm going to add that to the criteria. We'll see what happens. 
still 10,000 companies within mm. um, all of these counties. So in that case, you may want to go with a secondary um, code. That's what's, the a, what's a subset That's of health care like uh, um, home health or um, home health? I wonder if that would be nursing. Oops. Home, home health care. There you go. There you go. Home health care services. And we're going to add that to the criteria as well. Select at least one. Thought I did. Mm. Let me get rid of that primary. Mm. I thought you did. It looks like yeah. it. Just gonna redo it. Sometimes you will run into that, and that's a good, you know, example. Sometimes you just have to something just doesn't um doesn't work. And then you just have to I don't know why it's saying that. Select at least one. Hmm. And then delete them both. Well, go with what you were going to look for. <laughs> oh dear. So it won't let me add it for some reason. Um, that's interesting. It says to select it, but it's not happening. Do you think uh, you need secondary um, turned on? Mm -mm. Okay, the checkbox, I thought maybe. Okay. All right, well, let me just, um, that's unfortunate because it, it normally works. I've literally never had that happen. Yeah. Um, so, all right. Eh, we'll just go with health foods. Maybe that'll let me do it. I don't know. That's so weird. Um, you did the same thing. Yeah, it, it actually added them both. Um, but that's okay. <laughs> because it accomplished the goal. And the goal was to get um, <laughs> our list of companies down below 2,000. Right. So now we've got 464 companies within those counties that we selected that we wanted to search. We've got all of our search terms in. Um, you can continue adding, um, you know, the size of the company, the financial information, like what their sales are. Um, those are always good things. But let's go ahead and do um, the search and it will show you. Uh, you can narrow it down to what their um, sales range is. Um, in this case, most are less than a million, uh, but there's a few that are getting um, higher than that. And it gives you the list of companies, um, shows you whether they're a headquarters or a single location, uh, what their total sales are. And again, that is just the really basic info. When you click on something, just like what we did with that initial search with Purina, it's going to show you that company profile. Um, giving you their contact information, how many employees they have, um, any executive details, if there are any, um, family tree. And in this case, they do have, this is a much, you know, kind of smaller outfit, and they do have several locations, and it will show you that. So you know whether you're dealing with the headquarters um, overall company or you're dealing with uh, an individual location uh, within a larger company usually pretty important. Um, and it does have those uh, zip, co zip codes um, listed. So the important thing is- And then is what you export that? Is that- Yeah, uh, that's what, right. Hmm. That's what we're gonna do now. Okay. Um, the important thing is to build your file so that you can export it. Um, then you can you know do what you would like with it. So if you, are on this page and you click this so it's going to check everything but it's only going to check what's on this page hmm. if you are if you want to you can go through each of these and decide which ones you want or if you're like you know i just want to get go ahead and get the records during my session this one session that i'm in and i'll you know review them later then you would click up here on all so you see hmm. you've got you can choose a range hmm. of records 
or you can choose all. So we're going to choose all. And then right here, you have the option to build files. Uh, you also have the option to print, but I think it only prints. <laughs> I like to build files. You can click on export records. It's just going to export everything. I wouldn't recommend that because you're going to get so many fields with so much information. I usually like to build files. And this is what I thought I was doing in the beginning <laughs> with the company name and everything. Right, right. Um, what I do is you can see everything is checked in those top main categories. What mm -hmm. I like to do is click choose fields and then you can choose what it is that you want to actually export. So obviously you want your, your company name. You might want the parent name. Uh, you're going to want the um, web address and phone number. phone number. You can mm -hmm. choose whatever else you want. I mean, mm -hmm. I don't know why you would want longitude and latitude, but some people <laughs> might. Um, you're going to want the, you might want physical, um, and mailing address. You can click whatever it is that you are looking for. Um, then you can do the SIC codes if you want, you can include their sales. Um, usually you have to select at least, uh, one year in order to get the sales and you can go on and on. You can keep, um, kind of narrowing down what it is that you actually want to, to see from this company. So once you have selected all of your um, fields that you want to actually be exported, and it's going to export into a spreadsheet, then you are going to build the files and then you will choose your file name and build. See, it does want one year financial. I had that. Oh, oh, I think what kind I of think financial information. I think it's one of these down here. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Apologies, everyone. It's been a little while since I have. No, it's still done an advanced this search. Is the way we all uh, point and click and, uh, <laughs> and how you find out things, right? So there's two things you can do. You can download or you can email it. So if you want to email it to someone, um, you can do that, or you can just go ahead and download. Depending on the file size, it could take a while. This was, you know, relatively small because we did select fewer of those um, fields to actually export. And then you'll have, you know, if your web browser shows you where it's downloaded, you can just click on it. Oh, that's my staff schedule. <laughs> <laughs> I'm paying attention to that. I should have closed that before we started. It's asking if I want to open it anyway, and I do. We can't see the schedule if that's any consolation. Oh, can you see this? I can just see three aqua dots. Really? Uh, I think you... Uh, because you were sharing your browser and now you're sharing Excel, I think you have to uh, stop sharing and, and share, share again. again. All mm -hmm. right. I'm going to stop the share and then I'm going to share again. This should be an impressive file. Mm. Do you see it now? Yes, we do. Ew. Okay, good. So you can see that you've got your company name, immediate parent name, phone, web address. Again, it does not collect direct email addresses. That is one downside. Uh, but you do have, um, you know, address. These are all of the um, fields that I chose. You can choose as many as you want, depending on how big you want your file to be. Mm -hmm. um, the sales um, is always pretty interesting. And then that way, once you have it in Excel, you can sort it. You know, you can sort by location, you can sort by the sales volume, uh, whatever it is that you would like to to uh, find out the most. But now you've got a file that you can save and um, analyze at a later time. And again, you may want to put more data in it um, than, than I chose, but I didn't want to make something so huge. Um, so before I go on to the consumer data section, I just wanted to show you that about how to build files for business. Do, does anyone have any questions? No. Uh, no. Someone was looking and was saddened to uh, find out that their library or their county didn't have it, but someone found Mergent Online in uh, Virginia, Fairfax yeah. County. Yeah, there's a lot of libraries that carry it. and. Um, 
you know, it's again, there's there's like three major companies that are like competitors for the same kind of um same kind of business data. Uh, the reason we went with Mergent is because of the other content that it has. Mm -hmm. So things like consumer data and the first research reports. So I'm going to share my screen again. It did bump me out of Mergent when I went to that um, Excel. Oh, interesting. Uh, who knows? Um, so now we're going to go into the consumer data. And this is of interest to any of you who, um, and, and Diane, can you see my screen now? Yes, I can. Um, yep. You're good. Um this is of interest to anyone who is trying to create a list of potential customers who are individual consumers. So you're basically reaching out to them at their home um, for the most part, or you're just getting data about certain types of consumers that live in a certain area. Um, if you have a product or a service, or you're thinking about opening um, a business or anything in, in a particular area, and it can get pretty distinct. So we're gonna go into consumer data. And the information that is pulled into this, it comes from a lot of things. Obviously, there's like online listings, phone books. It also gets a lot of information from, you know, all those catalogs you receive in the mail. <laughs> and I've said this before in previous um, uh, uh, presentations. It's a little creepy how, you know, how much information is available about you out there to you know, advertisers and things, but, you know, so they're getting information from, you know, advertisers. If you've gone online, put your email address in to find out more information about something, they're getting it from those, those um, catalogs that are sent, um, you know, purchasing habits, things like that. So you actually have to go out and um, go onto different websites and select that you don't want, you know, your information saved, or you don't want to receive catalogs, that kind of thing. Um, but that is where a lot of the data is coming up is coming from and some of it's coming from Nielsen as well and so this is consumer lifestyle and this is also a way to search and get a list of people from a specific location we're not going to do quick search for name because that's you know we're not going to just search for one individual we're actually going to go to advanced search again like we did with business and your different options and it's a much more simple search than the business one is your different options are general, whether you wanna search by name. And again, we don't know their name, so we don't wanna do that. You may wanna search by phone area code, but usually you might use zip. So really location is kind of where you want to, um, to focus on. And you may wanna use map-based if you are not you know, familiar with the area, if you wanna just really um, Well, I'm not going to bother with that, but you you can like select. Um, it's kind of like the geo mapping feature. You can do that. We'll stick with state, and we'll go with county. And again, I'll use our same. Um, oh yeah, you got to do it this way. I'll use our same county that we are in, which is Manatee. And again, I hit that blue add to criteria button. It's very important uh, for getting that added to your search. But you can search for the whole state of Florida if you wanted, or you can even narrow this down by zip code. Um, you kind of have to, and then that way you can compare by zip code uh, if you would like. Um, but we'll just leave it this way. But you know, you definitely want to explore that. You can search by housing, like home market value. So if you really just want to market to the affluent people um, in the area, you might want to choose, you know, a certain home value. Again, click that add to criteria. If you don't do it, it's not going to update the search. And here's the where it gets interesting, mm -hmm. which is where they're pulling that information from catalogs, purchasing habits, um, all of those kinds of things, that information that's out there about you, that's where they're getting it from. So things like women's apparel, men's apparel, parenting, pet lovers, book buyers, um, arts, hobbies, travel enthusiasts, physical fitness, um, all of that kind of stuff. It You can even click if, if they are a pool owner or SUV owner. So um, you can get pretty... Um, what we call granular, you know, very detailed mm -hmm. uh, about some of this. So let's just say we're we're interested in, in marketing something 
uh, cooking and wine, but we're also interested in, actually, I'm going to go ahead and add that to criteria and we'll see what that looks like before we add any others. And then consumer detail. You know, you can get into age ranges, you can get into gender. If you do have a product or service that you think is very specific to maybe more women or men or to a certain age group, um, you know, whether they have a fireplace in the home, it's not really common, as common here as other areas. Um, net worth. Wow. So again, if you are looking for more of the affluent um, community and then estimated income, so I didn't click on a lot of things because I just want to see what we've come up with with the few categories that we have uh, selected. So let's go ahead. We've got um, mm -hmm. over 14,000 people with these specific um, categories selected. So I'm going to hit search because we only, we only selected a few. And so um, these are real people. Um, this is a, you know, their real names, their real address, uh, in some cases, their phone number, if they do have their phone number, um, listed, even these days, uh, your phone number and Mergent will have it like Mergent has my cell phone number in it. Um, <laughs> it's just, it's so hard to keep that information. Like, cause it, it, part of how a lot of uh, databases and sites get that information is so they're just scrubbing, you know, scrubbing data from, right. from the internet. So um jo so joanne asked uh, how do you know if these customers are on a do not call list do you um you don't that is a very good question like i said i i usually sign up on the do not call list and my my cell phone number is in here yeah the reason for that is again i think that they are you know they may be using something that kind of scrubs uh the internet so like I know my cell phone number is out there, you know, on the internet in, in various places, mm -hmm. who knows where they got it from. Um, so yeah, that, that's a very good question. And I don't believe that, that you can uh, filter that out. Um, so again, these are real people, real addresses. If you were to click on someone's, um, you know, you can see their household demographic data. So it's showing you a little about the house, what the home, you know, market value is. It even shows that this person completed mm. school. Mm. It shows all of their different lifestyle data. So not just the ones that we, they, that we checked. So you can see that they are book buyers, they're high tech enthusiasts. They are interested in sewing and knitting. Oh, that's the other thing I forgot to mention. It's also basing it on what magazines people subscribe to. Mm -hmm. So if they subscribe to those kind of magazines, it's going to show that. Um, they are also interested in hunting and fishing. That's probably coming from magazines or maybe even, again, purchasing habits. Um, they're avid investors, et cetera, et cetera. So if you wanted to, you could go into more detail and you can select more criteria um, to really get a little bit more targeted in the consumer group that you're trying to find. Um, but let's say that you um, you obviously you want to narrow this down a little bit because this is too too many for an export. You can do multiple um, exports from Mergent. So if you didn't want to run a new search, you could go to range and just put in the limit and go to build files. And then again, you want to list what it is that you actually want to be exported in the Excel. If you don't require all of these fields, you don't have to have them all in here. You know, you may not care about, you know, gender, um, but you may care about some of these others. And again, you can narrow it down to the different um, things that they're interested in if you just want to see a few of those. Yeah, um, none of these really display email addresses. Or They still don't. They don't. It does not collect email addresses. No. Right. That is one downside to it. Um, to to collect email addresses, I think that's like you have to contact, um, you have to pay for um, being able to acquire those, basically, um, just like advertisers do. So you can select on your different uh, criteria, whatever it is that you are interested um, in having be actually on. We already know what we selected is in our search. So 
we want to know also in our actual exported file. So you click on what it is that you want to know. Build your files. And this is a larger file, so it's going to take, you know, and you can see it didn't take that long. Um, we're going to download. Let's see if it bumps me out again this time. Oh, it went right to Excel. I can see. Interesting. Okay. And did you, do you see this? I do. Okay. So this is, again, just like the search, it's got their, um, it actually has their actual age. You can see that on here. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, there's, it, there's a lot of information about you out there. It, it's, it's pretty amazing when you think about it. Uh, it shows their, because I selected this, it shows their education. So this can be as large as you want it to be. It can include everything, as long as it was in your initial search criteria. Um, this is then something that if you personally, or if you have someone that you contract with or who works for you, who does marketing and does like, uh, if you do mail marketing, you know, you want to do a mail merge, something like that, um, then you can uh, use this for that purpose. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, another... <laughs> Joanne feels in invaded. <laughs> Oh, yeah. I mean, this is really eye opening for a lot of people. Um, but it's just that information is out there. You know, whenever you give your email to a company, you know, they're turning around and sharing it with others to market with to you. you know, all of a sudden, you'll start receiving emails for these companies that are like, I've never even heard of this company. I never signed up. It's because they got your email address from another company that you bought mm -hmm. something from. It's it's yes, it is pretty invasive. I agree. Um, but the other thing that you can use this for reports, I don't remember that one, is really basically you could use it just to geographically get an idea of, you know, who's interested in what by, by region. Um, so that that's different ways that you can, um, look at this as well versus just trying to get individual um individual consumer and uh, contact information you know you could use this search as, as a way to just try to you know figure out what region's interested in in um you know what type of product it just all depends on how you um how you build your search so that was it in a nutshell. Um, yeah. I know that was really, you know, a brief overview. Um, did anyone have any questions? No, other than Joanne feeling invaded, I think uh, that was the last comment. Uh, and the email address, of course, is a, yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah, you have to, I, you know, you have to contact a company that actually sells email addresses, and there are companies that do that, so you have to purchase that. <laughs> Matthew yeah. said that librarians are amazing and scary. Yeah, <laughs> you have no idea. Um, yes, it's, uh, you know, and, and, and this really points to how, you know, in the in the age that we live in, you know, how data is being collected and how it's being shared. Um, you know, it's, it's definitely, um, uh, a little, a little strange, you know, I remember when I first saw that my, my cell phone number was in here, I was like, Oh, <laughs> you know, I don't want that, but, uh, there's really not a lot you can do. I mean, you can go to some different sites and, um, uh, put re request, um, that your information not be shared, but you have to do it constantly. I mean, it's Absolutely. very, very difficult to keep up with. Yeah. Um, well, and I think, you know, the takeaway from this for a small business is you're trying to reach a, a, a group of uh, customers. So how can I reach the, how can I get the names and addresses of the customers that fit the profile that I'm looking for? And then I'll do a mail campaign. Mail campaigns, and we have a video on that, can be very effective. I know email campaigns are way cheaper, but uh, mail campaigns uh, have a good return on their investment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they definitely do. Um, yeah, even though they do cost more. Um, and, um, 
I forgot the other point I was going to make. Oh, about the consumer um, section too, which is, uh, as I said, you know, you don't have to use it just to get individual email, uh, excuse me, mailing addresses. But, you know, we've had people ask, you know, how to use it for uh, just say, you know, I helped a lady one time who wanted to open uh, a tea shop in a certain area. So we used that advanced search for the businesses to see what competitors might be in that area for, you know, who had a tea shop. But we also looked at consumer data um, to see, you know, the different um uh, the different criteria for consumers who lived in a certain area mm -hmm. do very specific geographic um, searches to, you know, look for, for marketing opportunities. Mm -hmm. Would so, this be a good place to open your, whatever it is that you're trying to open, you're saying? Yes. Yes. So I'm going to stop sharing the screen with Mergent on it. And then if okay. you want to advance. I, to will, I will come back to this. This, I guess, is the tutorial. Are you seeing my screen? Not yet. Not yet. It said you were. Oh, wait. <laughs> it's that ever popular button. <laughs> so this is the um, business resources tutorial that I mentioned. Again, we're not going to play it. It's, it's I think, I want to say it's like 19 minutes long and it will review some of that that I showed as well with all the, the different types of searches that we did. And it touches on a couple of our other business databases. So when you get the slides, you'll, you'll have access to this video. And then on the last slide is um, my contact information. Okay. Um, so our emails for my department, our department email and my email and contact information. So again, if you have any questions, um, please do feel free to reach out. Would you say that the reference librarian should be your new best friend if you were starting a business? <laughs> <laughs> looking to expand your business, market your business? Yeah, I mean, in terms of helping to figure out what kind of resources we have to help them, absolutely. And then we, of course, um, we... Uh, always refer people to Minnesota Square as well um, and to other local, um, you know, business um, resources. Um, so yeah, it's always a good place to start, especially for um, businesses who haven't started yet um, as a way to collect information. Absolutely. Well, someone had said that they have a cybersecurity business. I would think that you know, being able to go into a database like this and finding the, the size companies that you're interested in in your geographic area uh, is a good starting place to uh, identify these people. Yeah, I think I, I think it's pretty essential for for most businesses to identify both potential customers, but also potential competitors. Um, and that, this is a good place to do that as well. So Matthew is asking, can we utilize the reference services if we do not have a library card and are out of state? <laughs> um, I, I mean, if you're referring to using this database and doing searches and building files, no. Um, I mean, we do, um, you're, you're welcome to, you know, ask a question about the local area if there's something we can help with. But typically we do try to, um, show people how to use the resource. We don't necessarily do individual research. Um, yeah, sounds good. All right, I think that's the end of our questions. Um, let me see. Oh, uh, oh uh, Joanne said, is this what telemarketers use to call us? I'm thinking yes. Oh, I, I bet they use something much more sophisticated. <laughs> they know way more about us. <laughs> the person who said he was from CVS this morning, I, I knew a lot more about me and he wasn't from CVS. All right. Well, um, let me just uh, look, uh, point out just some information on the, the screen in front of you. Uh, if you're interested in uh, a mentor, please think about visiting our website, score.org slash Minnesota. Uh, you can click on request a mentor and put in your zip code and a few other things, and one will be assigned to you. 
Uh, if you'd like, you can click on mentor profiles and choose your own mentor. Well, you don't have to, you don't have to wait until you are assigned one or look at our local workshops or our recorded webinars or search for templates or any other resource that we have on our website. So I'd like to thank you all for coming and I'd like to thank Erica especially for sharing her knowledge. This was great. This was really terrific. I think it, it whet the appetite of a lot of our participants. I think you'll be getting some phone calls or uh, emails to follow up. Uh, for everyone who's attending, you'll get an email in the next day or two. As I mentioned, you'll get a link to this recording. You will also get a copy of Erica's slides. And from our national organization, you'll get a request to fill in a survey where you have an opportunity to uh, grade our presenter, Erica, and grade score for what we do. Uh, if you're interested, please fill that out. It really is helpful for us. And as the education chair, I always look at what other topics are you interested in? I want to bring you the topics that you feel are of importance to you. So no more questions. Erica, apparently you did an outstanding job in answering every question along the way. This was wonderful. Thank you so much, Erica. Thank you, Diane. Thank you for everyone for attending. Thank you all. And I hope to see you at a uh, webinar soon. Bye all.